Hello. Today we're going to talk about the Doppler effect. And we just have one goal, and that's to introduce the Doppler effect. So we'll jump right in and do that. Okay, so what the Doppler effect is, it's the uh, shift in frequency of a wave that occurs when the source of the wave or the detector of the wave, such as your ear, is moving. And there's lots of applications, including uh, medical tests using ultrasound, uh, police speed traps using radar, um, as well as astronomy. Some of these use sound waves. We're going to start by talking about the Doppler effect for sound waves, and some of the other applications use electromagnetic waves. And the one for sound waves is a little bit different than the one for electromagnetic waves. Okay, and there's a, kind of an illustration of this at the bottom. So there's a little round dot that's going to be our source of sound. And there's an observer here. That's this black rectangle. And so we see the source of sound there, which could be a police car or an ambulance, something like that, going past the observer. And if the police car was stationary, the observer would observe one frequency for the siren. And when the police car comes toward the observer, the observer observes a different frequency. And there's yet another frequency for when the um, police car is moving away from the observer. Okay, so we're going to start by just having everything at rest and just, uh, you know, kind of establishing a, a basis for to start from, where to start from. And so what we have here is a stationary source of, sta of sound, and it's broadcasting a single frequency wave. And in this case, the usual relationship between frequency, speed, and wavelength holds, and that is the frequency is the wave speed divided by the wavelength. And V here is the speed of the sound in the medium. So that's set by the medium itself. Okay, so now we're going to see what happens when the observer moves. Okay, so we'll keep the, maybe the police car will stay fixed and we'll just drive past or run past or walk past or whatever the police car. So what's going to happen now is that if you move toward the source, then you encounter more waves per unit time than you did before. The frequency of the waves you receive is larger. Okay. So on the left, this is the case where everything's at rest, just for reference. Okay, so in the time that the simulation happened, uh, four wave fronts passed over the observer. Now, the second one on the right is set up so the observer moves toward the source, and the first wave hits the observer at the same place the first wave hits the observer on the left, and when everything, everything's stationary, just to keep everything equal. And so in that same amount of time, here's the observer moving. The observer has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six wave fronts wash past them, move past them, in the same time that about four and a half went by in the case where the observer was stationary. Okay, and of course if the observer kept going on the other side, uh, fewer wave fronts would pass by them. Okay, so you move away from the source, you encounter fewer waves per unit time than you did before, and the frequency goes down. Okay. And so what's going on here is that the motion of the observer effectively changes the wave speed. Okay, so with respect to the observer, the waves are coming toward the observer faster than before, or slower than before, the observer is going away from the source. Okay, and we can shift into the observer's perspective to see this. Okay, so for you, the observer, the entire pattern is traveling toward you unchanged. So this is still the case of the source at rest and the observer moving, but it's seen from the observer's perspective. Okay, so here's the stage, purely stationary case, everything's at rest, and then now is the case where the Observer is actually moving, but it's shown from the observer's perspective. So, from their perspective, they're at rest, and the source appears to be moving. And so, you're going to get, in effect, a higher wave speed there. 
which explains the frequency difference. Okay, so we've just talked about the moving observer. And so relative to you, the observer, the waves travel at a higher speed, at least if you're moving toward the source, and it would, of course, be a lower speed if you were moving away. Okay, so let's go back to moving toward. So the effective velocity, V prime, is V, the speed of the waves, plus V of the observer. And, of course, if you move away from the source, then the relative speed between you and the waves is lower. And that would be V prime is V minus V O, O for observer. In either case, you get a shift in frequency. Okay, so the new frequency is the effective speed divided by the wavelength. And then we'll have V plus or minus V O, plus if the observer is moving toward the source, and minus if the observer moves away. And if we want to, we can... Um, multiply by V over V here, and then V over lambda is the original F. Okay, so we can actually write this in terms of the original F. So it's the original F multiplied by this fraction, V plus or minus V observer over V. V is the wave speed, V O is the observer speed. And once again, this is a general equation that works as long as the observer is moving directly along the line toward or away from the source. Okay, Then you use the top sign, which is positive, when the observer moves toward the source, the bottom sign when the observer moves away. So the observed frequency is higher than the emitted frequency when the observer is moving toward the source and lower than the emitted frequency when the observer is moving away. Okay, and just for completeness, we'll talk about the one where the uh, observer moves away. Okay, And so on the left we see everything stationary. Okay, So waves wash over you at a particular rate. And if you move away from the source, which we're showing, looking at now, then the waves have trouble catching up to you, so you uh, get hit by a lower frequency of wave fronts than you did before when you were at rest. Okay, so now let's talk about what happens when the source moves. Okay, and the situation definitely looks different. We can see a difference in the pattern. Okay, so when the source doesn't move, all those wave fronts, circular wave fronts, have the same center because the center is in fact the source. In this case, all those wave fronts have different centers because the wave fronts were emitted at different times, and of course, the uh, during the time interval between one wave front being emitted and the next one the source has moved to a different spot. Okay, So you get this asymmetric pattern, which is kind of interesting. The waves kind of pile up in front, and they're spread further apart in behind the source. OK, so let's kind of analyze that a little bit. And so what happens here is the source motion effect effectively changes the wavelength. Okay, So you get a uh, different wavelength, which is the original one, and then modified by the source uh, speed. Okay, and so yeah, the top sign again it applies when the source moves toward the observer, and the bottom sign applies when it moves away. And you notice there's a minus plus here, and so the plus or minus we had for the uh, observer moving. Okay, so the detected frequency now is f prime, and the, the new frequency is the wave speed over the effective wavelength, and when you slice and dice it, it comes down to the original frequency multiplied by V, the wave speed, over V minus or plus the source speed. Again, use the top sign when the motion is toward the other one, and the bottom sign when they're moving away. Okay, so we can actually combine those two equations we just looked at into one equation that accounts for everything. Okay, you can apply it when nothing moves. You can apply it when only the observer moves. You can apply it when only the source moves. You can apply it when both the source and the observer are moving. Okay, so you can apply it any case you want. And again, this is one that applies to sound waves. doesn't apply to electromagnetic waves. We'll do that analysis a little bit differently. But to sound waves or ultrasonic waves, uh, this will work. Okay, so the observed frequency f prime is the emitted frequency f multiplied by 
V plus or minus VO over V minus or plus VS. And again, always use the top sign when the motion is toward and the bottom sign when the motion is away. Okay, so I think that is all for our general introduction to the Doppler effect.